guys. Thanks again for tuning in to Border City Rock Talk. Uh, before I get to my interview guest today, just let you know, hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any of the interviews I got coming up, which are big. Angry Anderson Rose Tattoos coming up. I've got Jim McCarty from the Yardbirds coming up. Jeff Pilsen, who I'm going to be talking big talk about docking. Uh, a little bit of Foreigner, got him coming up. Um, there was breaking news the other day for my interview today, but I've just got breaking news starting tomorrow. And I've got this coming up. I've got Lexi Fox, formerly of Steel Panther, the uh, political serious band. He's also known as Travis Haley. I don't know where you got that crazy stage name from, but I've got him coming up. So like I said, hit that subscribe button so you don't miss anything. Right now, I've got three premier guests I'm gonna introduce. First, I've got Carmen Apice. Uh, everybody knows Carmen from uh, Blue Murder, Cactus. Uh, then I've got Carmen Apice, uh, who's known for working with Ted Nugent, Ozzy Osbourne. Uh, who else do we have working with? Oh, Michael Shanker, Marty Friedman. I, I think all the Nova as well. I think I'm going to ask you about that. And then I've got Carmen Apice, who we're known, uh, better known for Vanilla Fudge and uh, working with Rod Stewart. How are you doing, Carmen? Okay, well, you got to get the first name right. It's Carmine. Oh, I practice and I practice and I practice. Yes, Carmine. Carmine, Carmine. Yeah, Carmen, Carmen is the girl's version of Carmen, Carmine. Well, actually, I come from a city here in Canada on the border with your fine country. And we have a heavy Italian community and uh, there's a lot of... Carmine, Carmine. It's Carmine. In this okay. Carmini. Well, I didn't mean to make a mistake. <laughs> yeah, you made the mistake. -y. All right. <laughs> so, how are you doing? I'm good. I'm good. Awesome. I'm in. I'm in Florida, uh, yeah. where it's palm trees and tropical weather, and uh, I love it here. I got a new house. We moved in here a year and a half ago, right in the middle of the COVID. Yeah. And I put a studio in the house and. Yeah. And by putting the studio in the house, I'm able to record whenever I want to record, work on different projects. And uh, that's how this, uh, this new album, Energy Overload, came about from working in my studio. Right. Okay. Well, I was going to digress later, but let's get into Energy Over Overload right now. It's an instrumental from a drummer, and um, I'm not too sure. I mean, <clears throat> we've only got so many hours in each day to do research and stuff, but... Usually you hear an instrumental album maybe coming from a famous musician would be a guitarist or a singer. You don't generally, or I don't anyways, hear drummers doing instrumentals. How did this come about? Well, and, uh, Billy Cobham did in 1972. Okay, I wasn't, I was one then, so. Yeah, well, there you go. Well, uh, uh, it's, first of all, it's not just me. It's me yeah. and Fernando Perdomo. Uh, yeah. The album is called A Peace Perdomo Project. So it's the two of us. I play drums and write songs, and he plays guitar, bass, and keyboard and writes songs. And we both produced it. We both engineered it, uh, you know, which I, I got a kick out of the end. The credits were said engineered by Common a piece first time ever. I had an engineering credit because I got the studio on the house now. <clears throat> I always had famous engineers, you know, uh, Bob Rock and uh, Mike Frazier, Andy Johns. People like that, you know, Jimmy Iovine, you know, engineered stuff with me, and and uh, it's the first time I ever did it myself. So that's 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 probably the last thing on your bucket list you haven't done, right? You've done everything else. Yeah, I didn't. Yeah, I, I wasn't by choice. I'd rather not be the engineer, but but it makes it very easy to walk through the garage, walk into the guest house, open the door, turn on the computer, sit down, and press the record button to something I'm going to play to. You know, and versus getting my roadie, getting my drums, getting the set up in the studio, getting the drum sound. When all that's done, it's like four hours right. and then start recording. So by the time you get to the recording, you already had half a day's worth of work going on. You know, right. but this way, the drums are set up. They're never taken down. The mics are up. Everything's up. And I just walk in and press the button and start recording. I'm going to do that later. Um, so that's what one of my questions was going to be like, who did you have guest appearances on? And so it's just you and per Perdo on this one? Me and Fernando, and we had guest appearance by my buddy, uh, Derek Serenian. Oh, yeah, Black, yeah, from uh, Sons of Apollo and, and uh, Dream Theater. And, and I know him for so long. 
Yeah. You know, that he he played on a a live Vanilla Fudge record that Mark Stein didn't want to release, and so, and neither did Tim Bogart. But I had put it out on the Rhino, and I got sued by them. <laughs> Actually, oh, well. so, but we're still friends. And uh, and Derek was playing B three on it and never played a B three. I showed him how to play B three, especially the hanging on part, you know. And mm -hmm. uh, and we've been friends ever since then. That was nineteen ninety two. Yeah, Derek so, is a. Uh... He's very much uh, one of those guys in the industry that um, everybody wants. And um, I mean, I've known of his work in, in a lot of bands, but most recently Sons of Apollo is I've got yes. a pretty good relationship with uh, Bumblefoot and, um, yep. and Bumblefoot's on my record as well. Is he? Well, what he's on, is he, not this one is on my uh, Katarzy's record. Uh, I, gotta tell you. I have that coming out uh, in a couple of weeks. I'll tell you about it. Yeah, well, the thing with Bumblefoot is like, I think he's like Einstein. Einstein only slept like three hours a day. And Bumblefoot's yeah, everywhere. He's on everything. He's, he's just a great he's, guy. Um, and he's great. He's a great player. He played on a, a Peace Brothers solo record. You know, me and Vinny did a record a few years ago. Yeah. He played on that. He played on my Katarzy's record. Uh, he played with Asia. I mean, I just did a jam with him a couple of months ago in New Jersey for a charity. He's an awesome player and the nicest guy. Yeah, he super you know? is. And I all I keep offering to pay him. He never wants to accept anything. Oh no, uh, he said to send the checks through me. I'll get them to him. So okay, all right, that's cool. <laughs> so I said, and I even said, look, if you want me to play on something of yours, I got the studio. Just let me know. You know, that's that's it's awesome. Easy, but but that's my guitar Zeus project, which I did in 1995. Yeah, I'm doing the 25th anniversary box set of that and I got everybody, I pretty much got every name guitar player except for Steve Vai, Jeff Beck, Jimmy Page and uh, and Clapton. N name another one, I probably got him. Well, uh, you worked with Jeff Beck previously. I did work with, yeah. We have a live album coming out hopefully next year. So uh, um, 1974, but, but you know, it just was, I, I don't know, when I was doing that album in the 90s, it was more dead, it was more, looked at as the more of the 80s guys, like, you know, 70s and 80s, Brian May, Ingrid Malmsteen, Slash, yeah. Richie Sambora, D Dweezil Zappa, Elliot Easton, you know, just uh, all those guys. I even got Steven Seagal, the actor, and, and John McEnroe, tennis player, playing guitar on it. You, you've worked with everybody and anybody in, in all forms of uh, entertainment, even Sly Stallone. Yeah, yeah. I, I knock on wood. I've been I've been blessed with my career. I've worked with so many different people. Yeah. My next book, you know, I have a book called Stick It, My Life of Sex, Drums, Rock and Roll. I was going to ask you about that. That, that you can get uh, on my website and Amazon and all that. But my next book, I think, is going to be called Guitar Zeus, the book written by this guy that just wrote a new Led Zeppelin book, uh, Bob Spitz. And he said he wants to write this book with me. And I made a list of all the guitar players that I play with. And it was, there's some that I forgot all about. I think I forgot about Marty Friedman actually when you mentioned him. So any uh, any Canadians that you'll be bringing on board on there? there we've got a few uh, decent. I don't know. Uh, give me give me a couple of big name Canadian guys. Well, one of my favorites uh, is going to be Rick Emmett. Try Pat Travis. Pat Travis as well. Yeah, Mar Pat Travis is going to be a book. Rick Emmett, I never work with. I work with Pat. Yeah. Uh, who else? Well, you got Alex Lifeson. You've got Jeff Waters. You've got. Uh, Joy Landreth. I mean, yeah, I think I, I think Pat's the only Canadian one. Okay, you know? but I, all these other guys are on it. But it's a, it's an amazing array of albums, a box set too. So you have a bundle. You can get a T-shirt and a picture of me signed, autographed, nice. personally autographed, and you got a, a necklace and a guitar pick on the necklace, my logo on the necklace, and so it's two different bundles. Just the albums, four four albums vinyls that is, three CDs, and on the CDs is four songs that guitar players can play along. We left the guitar player off. Mm -hmm. you know, we got Ted Nugent on, on a couple of tracks. And, yeah. and uh, so you could play, instead of Ted playing, you could play along with the, with me, Tony, and Kelly Keeley. That's pretty nice. cool. Yeah, nice. So that's coming out December 17th. And we've got a new video on out on that with Tommy Thayer from Kiss is playing on right. it. Yeah. And it's called Mystified, and that's on YouTube just came out a couple of days ago, nice. as well as a second 
single of energy overload which is called flower child i i was listening to that one yesterday actually yeah it's a really good song and that you know it's funny because the way we wrote those songs i keep going back and forth now because both of these things are uh, simultaneous you know yeah. uh, but, but the instrumental songs with with fernando you know we wrote them by you know i i had stuff on my ipad that i wrote so i play guitar bass and drum uh keyboard a little bit yeah. You know, and I sing, so I, I always have melodies in my head. So I put them down on my iPad uh, on my garage band. I sent it to him and he played all the instruments, sent it back to me. I put the drums on. I said, wow, that sounds great. So then we did an experiment. I sent him a track, which is drums. Mm -hmm. uh, he sent me a track, which we call Little Havana. It was like a Latin rock thing. And I sent him back a really kick-ass, fast double bass drum boogie, which is drums. Right. I said, see what you can do with this. And he did amazing, amazing guitar parts to it. So I said, well, I have a, some other drum tracks I could send you. Mm -hmm. So I sent him one song, came, it became Rocket to the Sun. The Flower Child was a drum track I had. It became Flower Child. And he said, it, it's easy to write to my drum tracks as I play melodically. Right. You know? And so it's really interesting. I'm having a, a lot of fun with him. And you know, I call him a kid. He's 42 years old compared to me. He's a kid. You know, I'm going to be 75 next month. Really? You know? Well, you you age gracefully. You don't you don't yeah. look it. Well, uh, I feel it sometimes. <laughs> I feel myself slowing down on some of the things I would do on drums. Yeah. Just from age, but uh, I try and stay healthy and you know play as much as I can. Um, I know you were uh, you've been on tour recently or doing some shows yes. in Florida area. What, what were they? Were they based on this um, the new album or just no? A... No, the tour was with Vanilla Fudge okay. and uh, and Robbie Krieger. Okay, and and I did three shows with my brother, the drum wars shows that we do. So I did twelve shows in the last month and a half. Quite Which busy. Is... I mean, and you're talking about um, what you have out, um, you know, book wise and DVD wise. You sound like. Uh, you know, almost like a Gene Simmons kind of a, you got this big conglomerate of a, this corporation. Where can everybody get their, your stuff? Well, you can get all my stuff basically on my website, carlinapiece.com. I would send it back autographed. Oh, I got geez. a bunch of people that, you know, helped me put that stuff together and get it to the uh, post office. It's hard to do when I'm on the road because, you know, it's mainly out of Florida now. Yeah. But, uh, you know, you can get them all on Amazon and have uh, iTunes downloads, get all that stuff. Uh, the book is, you know, on Amazon and, uh, and all that stuff. That was uh, the Stick It book, that is. Yeah. And it's done pretty good. And I sold thousands and thousands of them. And, uh, you well, know, I mean, it's, it's, it's X-rated, crazy, crazy stories in there. Well, there you go. It's, it's We've got Christmas coming up and, uh, what is it, geez, five weeks and, um, I think that book was out in 016, but I mean, people yeah. are going to still want to read They're those. Still selling stories. it. I mean, at, at the shows, we, we we sell them out all the time. And uh, 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 these last shows, last week, last Monday, we had uh, Joe Bonamassa come up and jammed with Vanilla Fudge. Nice. And then the next night, Vanilla Fudge jammed with Robbie Krieger. Wow. Uh, so it's been a, a good little a good little run, you know. And I'm working on some with a new, possibly a new manager that really really get my show with my brother going that would be insane the peace brothers thing is going a, a, a bit more with more records and more gigs and everything else and next year we'll be doing more vanilla fudge and some cactus you know yeah. so sounds like uh oh, every day for you is christmas it sounds like you've got a really um positive outlook on life and you're really enthusiastic on bringing your music up to the uh the fans I do. I mean, you know, my passion is still music, playing drums, writing music, and uh, talking to fans, doing it. That's why I don't, I don't mind doing interviews, because I think it gives back to the fans, you know, for, for keeping my career going for 55 years, you know? Well, I mean, and, uh, the fact is, I've seen some of your interviews, and you're very humble. I mean, I've, I've interviewed some guys, and I, I'm, I can only probably name one over maybe 100 interviews that was kind of a dick. Yeah, yeah, there are you know out there. Human wise, he, was, he could have been having a bad day, right? I mean, well, look, they could have had a bad day, but you know, when I was younger, you know, it was I was more dick. Than I am now, <laughs> you, you you tend to 
to see what it's really worth and you know and that it's really given back to your audience that's supporting you and yeah. uh you know in the early days like in the Vidala fudge early days an example of that was uh Ludwig Drum Company wanted me to do clinics when I was in Vanilla Fudge and I had the big drums and started that big fat and big drums and power, you know, hitting and all that. Yeah. And I said, I don't want to do that. Yeah, I'm a pop star. <laughs> <You know? laughs> in 1972, when I wrote my book, Realistic Rock, which is a instructional book, they explained to me, if we do clinics, you'll sell books. I said, oh, so I started doing clinics. I was the very first rock musician to do a clinic. You know, and it sold my book. Now the book has sold 450,000 books. Wow. You know? And uh, and I got a, a whole catalog of books coming out next year of, of my old books that were, you know, haven't been released in a while because they were too expensive to do it on paper. Mm -hmm. Now with a combination of paper and download, yeah. it makes it more feasible to release. So we're releasing my whole catalog of eight books in all different formats and digital formats and uh, audio formats and downloadable, you know, just yeah. music formats. And it, it makes it a lot better. So Modern Drama Publications is releasing everything. And next year is the 50th anniversary of, of me joining Jeff Beck yeah. and 50th anniversary of my drum book. So I think wow. the live album hopefully will come out for the Jeff Beck thing uh, anniversary. And we have a lot of stuff planned for the 50th anniversary of my drum book, including the cover of Modern Drummer magazine, not mm -hmm. me, but the book. Yeah. You know, and then a Legends book with Modern Drummer magazine. So there's a lot of that stuff going on. And yeah, I mean, like I said, I've been blessed. I've been through the whole thing. I've been healthy. And nice. you know, I've only had one brush of, of near death in my career. Really? Which uh, now enables me not to go to Europe and Japan and South America anymore. I just stay in America. Well, I mean, you you've done that, right? I've done all that. I, I, the, I don't know to do it. Yeah, you've got the book. You bought the T-shirt. You've done it all. So you've got those fond memories, but now you can focus on you know probably where your fan base really yeah. Grew just your have, I just had home, having fun. I got a wonderful house here in Florida, and I'm mm -hmm. able to record here. And you know, I'm here with my my wife of 19 years, and we got a new dog. I was just going to say, when we, we talked on the phone, you had a couple barking. Do you have one or two dogs? Just one. He, he's enough barking for two, though. <laughs> What's yeah. his name? Moses. Moses. <laughs> Moses Tiberius of Peace Gold. <laughs> <laughs> Tiberius. So, so Tiberius. You, read, you read the Old Testament through and through. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I listen to it every day, actually. Nice. That's great. Um, I've, read, I've written some Christian songs now, too. I'm trying to get placed. Well, that's, that, well, that's great. Really, really good songs. And I, there's a Christian church I go to down here that's just unbelievable. It's like a revival. Mm -hmm. you know, the, or the, the people that go there are just wild. They sing, they dance, and the band is amazing. Uh, I even got the, uh, the band, I got the church a set of deep drums, real drums. They were using electronic drums. And since I got it, I noticed the kid J.P. out there was this awesome drummer, 28-year-old yeah. monster, you know. I'm going to do a book, an instructional book on, with him on playing Christian rock, you know, Christian rock drumming, which is di a bit different than regular rock drumming. You know? Well, the thing is, bringing up the Christian thing, I mean, I've got my own faith, you have your own faith, other people yeah. have their own faith, but right now, during this last 20 months, is a time when we need all the love we can get out there, right? That's right. That's right. Love wow. of, God, of God and faith and, and, uh, yeah, I, mean, I tell you what, when I go to the church, I, when I was a kid, I used to go to Catholic church and mm -hmm. going for the 10 o'clock mass. By 20 to 10, I'm looking at my watch. When's this thing going to end? You know, but uh, when I go to the church, I go, I go there at 11 o'clock. The band plays for 45 minutes. All this worship music, yeah. which is really good stuff, good gospel kind of stuff. Right. And then, they, then they, the pastor talks and he's funny and he, and he, you know, he, he keeps you interested. And then the band plays again, you know, and you could stay or, or leave, you know, and I always stay to the end and I go up and talk to the guys in the group and I walk out of there really inspired because the singing and playing is so good. You know, it's really, really the ultimate in, in singing and playing as far as I'm concerned, you know, great 
individual singing, great vocal singing together, like gospel stuff. Yeah. Great drumming, great bass playing, keyboard playing, guitar playing, everything. Yeah, there's so much talent out there. And the thing is, you've got a group of people that were handpicked by maybe a divine sense. Okay, you're yeah. going to do a showcase. But then you have the ones that are on YouTube, these kids that can shred five times faster than Ingve, but yeah. they're just kids at home, right? It's just there's so much talent out there. And Joe Bonamassa was one of them. Yeah. I know Joe since he's 12. Is that right? Yeah. He, okay, he you played, grew up in Brooklyn. Played, uh, I'm, I'm not sure if he's from Brooklyn. But no, I said you grew up in Brooklyn, right? I grew up in Brooklyn, yeah. But I know him from L.A. when and we did a show at the Irvine Meadows in the I don't know, 90s. Right. 92, maybe, maybe even the 80s. And it was a Leo Fender tribute show. And all right. the guitar players were there who played Stratocasters. You know, you had Steve Vai, Steve, uh, Steve Lukather, and, you know, all the guys from L.A. Yeah. And he was there. He was 12 years old. And uh -huh. he was shredding. And and you, that, that's when I met him. And you, and you could probably tell, too, because of your experience, you can sense this guy's going somewhere, this kid. Yeah, I mean, I sense that he was awesome. I sense he was a good kid. And look at him now. Yeah. 3.2 followers on Facebook. We just had him on our show. We have a show called Hanging and Banging that me and my brother and Ron and Esty, who is a promoter out in, um, uh, right outside Chicago at the Arcade Theater. Everyone plays there. Oh, okay. You know? St. Charles. Yes. Yeah, yeah, St. Charles. You know it. Well, you know why I know it. Why? <laughs> because uh, I was going to ask you, we talked earlier about Lexi Fox and Panther. And I remember watching one of their videos. It was a funny video, and they played at the Arcadia. Yeah, I know those guys since the nineties. Yeah, when I mean, they were they were called Atomic Punks. Yeah, and, and we they talked. Were, they were they were a van. They were one of the first tribute bands out, and they were uh, they were the Atomic Punks, and they played this place, the uh, Paladinos, every Wednesday. Yeah, you know? and they were a great great tribute band to Van Halen. But then they added comedy in there. You yeah. Know, before, and you know, and, and they wore the wigs to yeah. look like Van Halen. Yeah. And and like one time, I they called me up a couple of times. I went to see him to play with them, and they and they called me up and they'd goof on the fact that, oh, he has come on a piece. You know, play with Black Sabbath. And they go, no, that's his brother. He didn't play with Black Sabbath. He played with that wimp Rod Stewart. You know, they yeah. something like that. You know, and and it was a lot of fun. You know, and then. I watched them progress, progress from the atomic punk yeah. to the uh, Steel Panther thing, and I said, oh, "Look at these guys! They're getting big as a, as a, as a parody kind of heavy metal band. That's well, really funny." The the huge thing about it is I've shown people a Panther a concert or video just if I had guests over, and they realize very quickly the talent of. Um, you know, Satchel, the guitar player, the talent of Sticks, the, the drummer, um, yeah. Michael Starr can sing with anyone. And then Travis Haley, who's who is formerly Lexi Fox. What I'm going to ask him about this in my interview, but I mean, with Lexi, he on there is, is playing like, you know, the bass player that doesn't really know too many notes because he only has four strings, but he's, he's a phenomenal bass player. So um, yeah, they're all talented and that's why they went from being a funny band on the stage. You only can be funny and attract people so much, but Music well, they played the Van Halen stuff great. Oh, huh. I yeah, mean, they played the, the David Lee Roth era, Van yeah. Halen, he, and he looked just like David Lee Roth. And and they, I, I think they all had day jobs as they had all short hair when they were well, doing yeah. that back in well, the day. You know, when they started, when they were doing the Atomic Punks. I might be wrong on that, but I remember yeah. they all had short hair and they put the wigs on for the shows. Yeah. You know? Well, speaking of Van Halen, Carmine. Um, David Lee Roth or Sammy Hagar, or would you want to stay neutral? I say uh, Sammy Hagar. You know what? It's interesting. I stay neutral in the way that you're right. I mean, when I first heard Sammy on there, I was kind of turned off because I was a big Roth fan. But yeah. as I started to listen to him more, yeah. I realized he, he's more musical. He's yeah. dynamic. And you know, he's, he's <laughs> a great it more, It was more musical as a yeah. songwriter. And and all you know, they, I mean, I thought Van Halen with David Lee Roth was really good. I almost played with David Lee Roth until I, that's a funny story. Yeah. We went to rehearsal and he had this outfit on that looked like a pair of pajamas that 
<laughs> were made out of the uh, Holiday Inn bedspread and curtain material. What? You know? Yeah, and it was really, really wild looking. So did he just wake up? We, so we were rehearsing. Well, I, 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 there was Malcolm Mendoza, I think, was in it, and, and uh, or maybe Billy Sheehan. I can't remember who was. Somebody like that was putting it together with some new guitar player, mm -hmm. and, they, and and me and Dave. Well, would have been, it would probably be Billy Sheen because when he left Van Halen, he recruited Billy and Steve Vai. No, no, no. I know that. But this was after that. Oh, okay. So it could have been Billy Sheen. It could have been Malcolm Mendoza. But one of the two, they were out on the road with, I think, I think it was Malcolm who was out with Whitesnake, I think. Yeah. You know? and, and so it was a guitar player and it had some filling bass player. And me and Dave would come down. So we did one, one or two rehearsals. Then this one day he came down in that outfit. And when I said that to him, next thing I know, there are no more rehearsals. <laughs> I wasn't called in anymore. And that was the end of it. So I thought it was because I said, you know, what I said about the outfit was that a Holiday Inn <laughs> outfit that you made out of the, the curtain and bedspread material. <laughs> well, he's a trendsetter because um, I don't know if you've seen it, but if you walk the uh, the local malls, you see kids walking around in pajamas all the time. <laughs> I know. We just played with uh, with uh, Robbie Krieger, and he had some pants on that looked like it was pajamas. You know, <laughs> and it, it it was funny. But, but you know, anyway, but for me, when they came out with the first hang, uh, the first song. Da -da 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 Oh, um, yeah. why this can't be love with Sammy? I said, yeah. whoa, what a great sound. Yeah. What a great song. Yeah. You know, I mean, you know, Jump was a great song, you yeah. know, and all that too. But with that voice, Sammy's voice, but, on, and their, on their trio track, it was awesome, man. All their songs. I mean, right now, I mean, so many songs that that, that FUCK album, Andy Johns engineered it. Yeah. It a great record. Summer Pretty nights nice. and um, yeah, yeah. 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 Well, Even I know like half a teacher was a. Alex told me that was a the template for half a teacher was my band Cactus. Really? Farm. Yes. You get eruptions on that? Uh, no, it's just the template. The, the, the fast double bass drums. Okay, I don't know. I was the first one to do that, and they. All right. They, yeah, Alex, was, Eddie, and Alex were big Cactus fans, and if you listen to, you should do this on your show. It'd be funny. You listen to a song called Let Me Swim. Okay. You listen to the intro of Let Me Swim and you listen to Eruption, you can see where they got Eruption from. Really? Yeah. I'm going to have to look that up for sure. I mean, we had the big chord guitar thing, then we went, blam, 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 another guitar thing, and then we yeah. went into the song. They just extended it. They hit the big chord and Eddie did all his stuff. Blah, 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 blah longer and then they did down 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 and more stuff well the intro to that sounds like um i know what you're talking about but i'm a big uh randy rose fan and when they did tribute no, this is before did... randy rose no no i know what i'm just saying with the, the three chord introduction when randy did his big solo on tribute it was yeah, like yeah yeah something like that yeah but um, that, but but you know it was blatant the same thing you know yeah you can hit a big chord do a solo everybody did that but when you go Bam, 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 and hit the same chord. Yeah. Hit the bam, 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 hit the same chord that we did, and then solo over that. It's the same thing. Yeah. Okay. But anyway, they told me that. So. Oh, at least they were up front. They told me they were huge Cactus fans. As a matter of fact, I was on the phone with Eddie one time. We were doing a new Vanilla Fudge thing. He said, "He said, fuck Vanilla Fudge, man. Bring Cactus back." Is that right? Eddie, Eddie told me that. Yeah. On the phone. Uh <laughs> um just gonna ask you a few more questions and let you get back to your Saturday afternoon with the palm trees. I, I know you you envy me here. We've got snow. I was just in Buffalo last week. I woke up and had snow. Wow. Well, you know, you can't have Christmas without snow, right? Yeah, you can down here. Okay. I, well, I mean, I would trade shoes with you if I could. So I lived in LA 40 years. I had as many years of no snow. Well, that's that's why they had that spray For on Christmas. Paint. You can spray on the white on the mind that. Yeah, you can. Um, okay, so you've been, everybody knows um, your history. Well, it's obviously been around. Um, you've uh, influenced Nickel McBrain, Neil Peart. Jeez, uh, who else? Like, I know there's dozens. 
John Bonham. Um, I leave a note here. There's tons. Have you, who's, who no, most notably has come up to you and said you're an influence that you were like blown away because you respected them just as much? Is there anybody that fits that kind of a question? Yeah, it was Phil Collins. Oh, I was just going to say, yeah, Genesis, right. I, that was in my thought. Phil Collins, when, when we played the 40th anniversary of Atlantic Records in Madison Square Garden with Vanilla Fudge, and you know, Led Zeppelin played with Jason Bonham, and uh, Yes played, and well, all the Atlantic acts, including Phil. And we got off the stage. Phil was on the side of the stage. Uh, well, hey, Phil, how you doing? I knew him, you know. He, he, did, he goes, you don't know how much you and you know, Fudge influenced me. Wow. I said, wow, thank you so much. And I gave him a hug. And I was almost going to kiss him on the cheek. <laughs> you know? Well, you could. You're Italian, so that would be okay. Yeah, and, but, you know, that blew my mind because, you know, I didn't think about I never really thought about me or Vanilla Fudge influenced Phil Collins, you know. Yeah. Well, he, he was such a great artist. I love Phil's work. His right. voice, his, his, his drumming. He's another one that plays melodic drums. Mm -hmm. Like I was just doing an interview before uh, when uh, Fernando said when he was writing the songs to my drums that were melodic drums, you play melodically. You don't just play time. Your drums are melodic, you know. Mm -hmm. And I said, that probably comes from the fact that I've been singing all my life, doo-wop and all that stuff when I was yeah. a kid. And and I learned to play, you know, reading music and and I uh, played in all kinds of you know, orchestras, bands and marching bands and jazz bands, rock bands, all that stuff. So my drumming takes on a different perspective than a lot of just rock drummers, you know. Right, right. You got to... Large pedigree. Even, even um, different than my brother. You right. know, my brother didn't never did all that stuff. He's really plays rock, you know, and he plays more time than I do. Right. You know, I play more, I yeah. don't know, it's just different. It would melodically using the toms and the cymbals. Yeah. You know. You improvise during your songs quite a bit. Yeah, yeah kind of melodic mm -hmm. improvising, going with the melody of the song. Mm -hmm. so then he would just play, you know, straight time to it. Right. You know, there are a lot of things we do that are similar that naturally because he's my brother. He watched me grow up when, you know, I used to have band rehearsals in the house when he was five years old, you know, and that inspired him to keep listening. And then when I made it, forget about it. You know, I was a brother on the Ed Sullivan show and all these big TV shows and yeah. went to see me at Madison Square Garden, saw me at the Fillmore's and you know, four shows at the Fillmore. And, you know, he was like totally inspired. And I left the drum set at home. He started playing. I sent him to my teacher. Yeah, uh, I read about he had that. talent, you know. And mm -hmm. So so we have a lot of similarities, but a lot of differences. And people come up to me and say, who's better, you or your brother? I just say, I'm the original. <laughs> yeah, you're the teacher. So figure I'm it out. I'm the original. I'm the original. You know? didn't, didn't you at one point when you were... Um... Um, being taught, your teacher came to you and said, "Listen, you're 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 um, you're way above where you should be right now." Yeah, I, I did like in five. I did five years worth of work in three years, and he said, "I'm I'm actually, you know, I don't know what else to teach you." I wow. said, "Okay, well, thank you." But he taught me enough where I learned how to read, which in in turn the reading helped me write the drum book. Yeah, I didn't know how to read. I couldn't write the drum book. Yeah. It's the drum book help people. I mean, guys that have gone through the drum book were like Greg Bissonette, yeah. uh, Dave Weckl, and Andrew Dice Clay. <laughs> what? Yeah. Andrew Dice Clay is a drummer. One day I was coming out of uh, <coughs> the hot, what is it, uh, the House of Blues in LA. I had a red Mustang <clears throat> at the time, souped up Mustang. And I see somebody running at me. Andrew Dice Clay running at me, open the window. He goes, hey, come on. I go, hey, Dice, what's up? He said, hey, I just got to tell you something. I go, what? He goes, I play the drums. I went through your book. What's the name of that book? Uh, um, realistic Rock. He goes, yeah, I went through Realistic Rock. I said, get out of here. You went through Realistic Rock? He said, yeah. I said, I don't even know you played. He goes, yeah. He goes, here's my number. He said, I got two kids that play. I I'd like you to maybe come and teach them. I said, oh, okay. So I took his number and then we, we became friends. He put, a little right? blip on, he put a little blip on the back of the book and the next printing. Because, you know, my mind just clicks. How could I use this? <clears throat> Andrew Dice Clay went through my book. How could I use this? <laughs> oh, wow. You just, he just gave me a quote for the back and, and I went to his house and, 
I went to his house. I took my son with me, who was the same age as his sons at the time. Yeah. And while I gave one summer lesson, my son was playing basketball and Andrew Jad with, with the other son and then vice versa when the other son took the lesson. Wow. And, uh, and he had three drum sets there and we all played, you know, took some fours together. It was great fun. You know? uh, I, I t listen, all you, everybody watching, <clears throat> this is all it takes. Next time you see Carmine, whether it's in an airport or on the street, run them down, give them your phone number, and that's how you'll get them to come over to your house. And, uh, <laughs> you go. I, got, I had a guy in, in LA and uh, no, Long Island on, who just played there. And we did the meet, meet and greet. Do you give lessons? I said, I'm, I'm very expensive because, you know, I don't have the time normally to do one-on-one -on -one lessons. Time, yeah. You know, so I said, they're very expensive. He said, well, I'd like to take a lesson. He said, what's very expensive, a thousand dollars? I said, sure, right? So the guy gave me his number. So I had my wife call him to see if he was serious about it because I was going to New York again. I had a day that I could have done it if he wanted to really do it. Last lesson I gave private lesson was the head of the, the police chief of New York City. Uh, he was a drummer, he wanted to take lessons. I, I gave him one lesson. Wow. I gave him a cheaper lesson because he was police chief and I, you know, I was in support of police. Yeah, you know? that's amazing. Um, before I let you go, just a couple quick cliche questions here. We're definitely going to put the link to uh, your website so everybody can go and get uh, Energy Overload, your books and anything yeah. uh, you got out there. We'll put that down there. Uh, yeah. Before I forget, I forgot, I've got an interview coming up next week and I, I don't want to forget this. Uh, Canadian band out of London, Ontario, a bunch of young kids called Looping. So everybody stay tuned, hit that subscribe button. Coffee or tea? Coffee now, I used to drink tea more. But since I've been with my wife, she's a coffee aficionado. Nice. So every day is, is coffee. So <laughs> I just walked in with a new dog, a new dog bed. Oh yeah, nice. Right? Yeah, so we're having problems with our dog. He wakes up in the morning with bumps all the time. Oh, no. We don't know why. So we thought it might have been the bed. So we got him a new bed. And we think How old? Is. He's a year and a half. The Vishla. You know what a Vishla is? Um, yeah, like I will when you freaking, tell me. It's like a red, red uh, point. Huh? It's like a red wine moran. Yeah, did you hear that? A red yeah. wine hi, how are you? Hello, he says hi. Hi. All right. Uh, oh, did you hear what she said? No. What is it? A wine? Wine or Wine Oh, no, still don't know. But anyways, I'll Google it. It's a red, it's a red, like a reddish dog. He's a point, like a pointer is a hunting dog. Oh, okay. Um, well, okay. And he's, I and he's a wild. He's wild. Nice. Yeah, yeah he's a, he's very high energy all the time. For sure. Um, yeah, but, but anyway, so. You know, we're trying to figure out what the hell's going on with him. You know, it's like how, how long have you had this dog? A year and a half, and oh, you've had it a year and a half. Yeah, yeah, we had him a year and a half, and and like like we just went out on the road. So Les, you know, Leslie came to New York, and so he was at the dog, you know, where the dog camp that we sent him to. Yeah, and he was fine, and he was home one day, went to bed here one day, woke up, and he had bumps all over. So we, Mm, I checked the dog camp thing out. Maybe it's the bed. So last night we put him in another bed and he still woke up with the bumps. He goes to bed yeah. without the bumps and wakes up with the bumps. It's crazy. Wow. Uh, okay, so favorite Canadian or an influence Canadian-wise other than Neil Peart, obviously, or Pat Travers? Anybody else that, uh, that you would say is somebody who grew up admiring Canadian-wise in the music industry? Gene Cornish. Right. Okay. Bob Rock as well. Oh, Bob Rock. I don't know who's Canadian. Bob yeah, Rock. Well, I think okay. he is. I'd say, Bob, I'd say Bob Rock and Mike Frazier. I'll have so to double check on Bob Rock. I'm pretty sure because he produced a whack of albums in Vancouver with Bon Jovi yeah. and Molly Crew. But... Yeah, and, and, that, and Blue Murder was his first album he produced. Right, right. And, the oh, other yeah, ones, the other ones he engineered. Sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. The other um, ones he engineered. Okay. Blue Murder was the first one he produced as a whole. Okay. And speaking of Blue Murder, any uh, do you still have any contact with John? I haven't talked to him in a while. Ever since you know, last year we did the, uh, met, uh, I was at the Heavy Metal Hall of Fame. He was there mm -hmm. collecting collecting something from Bob, for Bob, uh, Bob Daisley, an award. 
And you know, we were going to do a Blue Murder tour, and he wanted to do it more as a historical John tour. So wow. uh, I didn't want to do that, neither did Tony, but he was going to go out himself. I think Tony was going to go with him with another drummer and just do a history of John Sykes yeah. kind of tour. And I told him, yeah, and we agreed that when he was done with that, that we would talk and try and go out and do Blue Murder. But you know, and then COVID hit, so all that went down the drain. So I haven't talked to him since. Uh, I did leave him a, a text. I never heard back from him. But English guitar players are noted for never answering. Yeah. As as, as, they're they're going to chalk it up to the time delay, right? Yeah, I don't know. Well, he lives in Northridge, California, so I don't know. Well, that's what I was yeah. just going to say. But I love John. He's, he was like a brother for a long time. And, you know, but I hope that uh, someday we do do it. But we've got to hurry up. Carl and be 75 next year. Yeah, you don't look it. So you know. two quick ones that I have to ask or I'll be shot for. Rod Stewart, you have any contact with him in the last so many years or anything like yep, that? Yeah, I, I saw him uh, in July. We had a drink. He has a house in Palm Beach. Oh. Uh, I saw him there. We hung out for a couple hours, took a picture together, which I didn't put on social media. So I don't believe in yeah. doing that. Just to, hey, it would Rod Stewart. You know, I, mean, I don't believe in that crap. You know, just like with John, uh, Joe Bonamassa, all the guys in the band took pictures with Joe. I didn't, you know. Yeah, I mean. I know, I know him since he's 12. He's like a friend, you know. Yeah. I got yeah. a video. I got a video called uh, Superstition by Bonamassa Boga and the Peace that's on YouTube. Yeah. yeah. And you've, you've we, got those uh, pictures. Friends, you know. You've got those pictures up here anyway, so. Yeah, I, I don't need to do that. So, yeah, so we hung out with Rod and I was going to go try and see him in Vegas on the way to get my daughter's wedding in, in October, but I couldn't make it. And I didn't hear from him in time to buy the ticket. Now I hear he's playing here in February in South Florida in uh, the Hard Rock. So I don't know if I'm here, maybe I'll, I'll, I'll try and say, I want to go up and play Hot Legs and be a thing of sex. I was just going to say, maybe Maybe that ask. scared him. Maybe that scared him off, you know. No, no, I'll bet he's, you. He's a bit fragile now, you know, his voice and everything through the cancer he had. Yeah, you know, but he's a good guy. I love Rod. He's like a brother. I learned a lot from him. He wrote the introduction to my book. Yeah, and in it he said I fired Carmine. Fuck knows why, you know, <laughs> which was funny. Uh, but you know, so we, you know, we've been in contact. I went to his 70th birthday party a few years ago. I invited him to my 70th birthday, 75th that we're doing down here in Palm Beach. Yeah, because he usually comes down this area for Christmas time. You know, so. If he's here, I invite him. I, don't, I doubt if he'll come because, you know, if he comes, he'll be the celebrity everybody's going to hassle. Yeah. You know? But yeah. Uh, I, I wanted to invite him because he invited me to his, you know. And, and for the rockers and the metalheads out there that are watching, um, don't realize uh, maybe they've been in isolation a little bit too much with no social media for the, all their lives. You, you, you co-wrote a couple of the biggest hits, Young Turks, Do You Think I'm Sexy? And yeah. Yeah, people, a lot of people. Do you think I'm sexy was the biggest hit he ever had? Really? Yeah. Unbelievable. And uh, Young Turks was, you know, around, you know, it was probably sexy, Maggie Mae, Young Turks. Yeah. Uh, and You're in My Heart, Tonight's the Night. Those are like the, the top five, the types of, the top, you know, number six. But anyway, that, yeah, I learned a lot about songwriting, about image, about a lot of stuff from Rod, you know, and, uh, He's a great guy. You know, I love Rodney. And we're still friends. And, nice. uh, you know, I hope he keeps going. You know, they, and look, the guy had cancer of the, of the uh, um, thyroid. Yeah. You know, and it affected his voice. Mm -hmm. We both have reflux. Right? You have to take pills for that. Yeah. Which affects your voice. You know, and he's a singer. I mean, I'm a singing drummer, but I only sing one song a night yeah. with Vanilla Fudge. I sing ha harmonies, but that doesn't affect the voice, but the one song affects my voice, singing the lead, you know, and it, for him being a singer and having this, I, I feel for him because it sucks. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I, I had to get Mark Stein, a, a keyboard singer, a main singer, to sing the modulation and people get ready. Right. That I sing on the first few days of the tour because I couldn't hit it, yeah. you know, and we, you know, and Rod, you know, they, they've, taking the keys down so you can sing it easier. You know, and a lot of people do that, but in Vanilla Fudge, we're still in the, in the, in the keys we were when we were 20 years old. Nice. You know, and my singer, Mark Stein, is just unbelievable singer. Mm. You know? 
Right. He's got all these other ailments, but nothing affected his voice or his keyboard playing. Well, you that's know? just He's great. The best organ player and one of the best singers out there, you know? Yeah. Um, I'm going to ask you one question, and it's just because I think it's so <coughs> unique. I, I hope you don't get asked it a lot, but what is the tell, – tell the viewers the, the connection between your mother's lasagna dish and John Lennon. Uh, well, my brother Vinny met, met uh, John Lennon at the record plant, and they became friends, and they played on a record. And they, Actually, my brother and his band at the time played on the very last show that John Lennon ever did. And it was no because they, they were recording, they're managed by the record plant, uh, and they were there every day and they hung out with John. He got to like him. So he, my brother said, Do you like lasagna? You know, or Italian food. He goes, Yeah, I love lasagna. He said, Well, I'm going to have my mother make you some. So he made some, and she made some for, lasagna, for him. Yeah. Okay. And, uh, and basically, two months later, I played the garden five nights with Rod. And the last night we had a big party and my mother and father came, of course. And, mm -hmm. and uh, at the time we had a big ad on Broadway, you know, New York welcomes, Rod Stewart group, Carmine, Jim, you know, all, all of us, you know, we were in the limo and I stopped in front of that billboard with my parents and said, hey, so I'm a junior. Yeah. So my father, there's your name up there on Broadway, Pop, you know. Nice. So it, was, it was not exciting, you know. So we went to the party and... Uh, John Lennon was there. I met John Lennon that afternoon at the gig. And uh, so my mother said, isn't that John Lennon there? I said, yeah. He goes, yeah, I made lasagna for him. I want to see if he liked it. I never heard if he liked it. I said, well, let's go talk to him. So we went over to talk to him. I said, hey, John, this is my mother and father, you know, Vinny's parents. My mother made you lasagna? And he said, yeah, she did. My mother said, how'd you like it? He said, oh, I loved it. So my mother says, can I have my pan back? <laughs> Classic sounds like, story. Sounds like my mother in Tupperware. Yeah, you know, it's like that was the pan, you know, that was made for years, all the lasagna and the Monte Bart and the and uh, baked, baked ziti and all, all the Italian dishes that you had to bake it. Yeah. was baked in that pan. And she gave him the whole pan, you know. My, she expected my brother to get it back. And, you know, no, I... since he didn't get it back and she met him, <laughs> I, 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 I sunk in my, in my, my, in place, I should say. Yeah. yeah, he probably, he probably was just uh, so thrilled to have uh, your mother's lasagna. Well, you know, I mean, it's John Lennon, you know, he just had the pan. God knows if he kept it or threw it away, you know. Yeah. I mean, I get stuff that people give me and, you know, it's, it, you know, it's, hold on. I hate these spam calls. Oh, I know. Ridiculous. They're everywhere. You know, and then when you answer them, they go, Carmine? Carmen? I yeah. go, no, I'm not Carmen. Uh, can I help you? And they, they start telling me about stuff that I have no interest in. I just hang up. Well, I don't even answer them. I don't usually answer them. But once in a while, I answer them just to see what they're selling. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Just to buzz balls. Yeah. yeah. I hear you. Yeah. Well, Thanks for your time, Carmine. I really appreciate it. We're going to go um, put the links underneath so that people can um, go to your website and uh, get a hold cool. of Energy Overload and all that stuff. And um, one last thing, do you have anything to say to your Canadian fans out here? Well, like I said before, I to thank all Can Canadian fans uh, for the support all our life. And, and uh, I've always had great times in Canada, especially in uh, Toronto when I learned that they make these big hash joints <laughs> in Toronto. Yeah, we're, we're a liberal country for sure. Yeah, it was a, Canada's always been great. I, I heard my first, my, I heard the track that I did with Pink Floyd in, in Hamilton, Canada, while I was doing a movie called Black Roses, a heavy metal movie. Okay. Right? And I, I never got to hear what I did until I heard that album was out and I went downstairs to one of your underground malls. Yeah. Right? And I bought it in a record store and I listened to it on my Sony Walkman. Remember those days, yeah. And that was the first time I heard Dogs of War. Wow. With, me, uh, with Pink Floyd. I was in Hamilton, Canada. I remember it distinctly doing oh, that movie. Man. And you know who was in that movie with me was Big Pussy from The Sopranos. Is that right? Yeah, he was in that movie. And uh, 
and uh, a couple other people from like daytime serials. It was it was a heavy metal horror movie that was you know a B movie, but yeah. it, it ended up on nationwide TV in America. You know, wow. as I had done the soundtrack at first, and then they wanted me to play the drummer. It's about the band was a heavy metal band, but the the singer was really the devil. You know, so when the doors closed and just the kids were in the auditorium, all the music became demonic and influenced the kids and killed people. Yeah. Yeah. I remember those and, days. And, and, and Big Pussy gets sucked into a speaker and kills. <laughs> it's really hilarious. I mean, I think it's on YouTube and stuff like that. It's a funny movie. I'll have to get Black it. Roses. Oh, okay. Everybody check that out for sure. Yeah, you had Lizzie Borden did the soundtrack. King Cobra did the soundtrack. Uh, Mark Free and, and uh, from King Cobra and, and different musicians did the soundtrack. And then they called me and said, would you like to be in the movie? We need a drummer for the band. I said, sure. You know, yeah. you know my, you know, I'm always Vinnie Apice, you know, or Vinnie Apice, call my Apice. Call. I was Vinnie Apache. Was my Apache? Character. Apache. I never heard that one. I know. Well, I, I should get that from the, the, the great jazz drummer, Joe Morello. When we used okay, to do yeah. these Ludwig symposiums, it was like a, like a rock fantasy camp, but it was a, it was a, Camp for everything, for vibes, for xylophone, percussion, drums, you know, congas, all that. And he couldn't, uh, he, he's, he was so confused with the name. He said, Hey, where's Apache? Is Apache here yet? <laughs> so, so I said, yeah. Oh, that'd be cool. Vinny, Vinny Apache would be a, a cool name for the character in the movie. So that's what it was. At the end, it says Vinny Apache. Oh, it did. Okay. <laughs> so you have four aliases. Uh, yeah, yeah. You can go Apache if you want. <laughs> oh. Well, really thanks funny. a lot, uh, Thank you, man. Car Carmine, and uh, God bless and stay safe. And uh, you too. Look forward Cheers. to seeing you on the road. Cheers. Okay, man. Ciao. Bye bye.